Hello, and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today, I'm going to show you one way to get the official TensorFlow implementation of Stargan 2 running on the newly released Ubuntu 2004. I'll show you how to get the basic requirements in place, and then generate a few images using a couple of the available pre-trained networks. I've put the links in the video description, as well as the commands I'm going to be going through now. So, what I've got here is a fresh install of Ubuntu 20, I'm on the official TensorFlow implementation for Stargan 2 page on GitHub. Down here, it provides us with the requirements for running this. Both Linux and Windows are supported. Linux is recommended for performance and compatibility reasons, so yeah, I'm using Ubuntu 20. 64-bit Python. We recommend Anaconda 3 and NumPy. Uh, TensorFlow 1.14 or 1.15 with GPU support. I'm going to be doing 1.15. Uh, I'm not on Windows, and now this bit's quite fun here. To reproduce the results reported in the paper, you need an NVIDIA GPU with at least 16 gigabytes of DRAM. And the actual results they're talking about are down here in training the networks. You can see it's quite good. Um, <laughs> we have verified the results match the paper, and training with one, two, four, or eight GPUs. Um, that resolution uh, with at least 16 gigabytes of memory uh, using eight Tesla V100s. Now, I've only got a GTX 1070, uh, so I can see if I want to do some training, I've only got eight gig of GPU memory, so I'm, I'm probably more likely gonna be looking at this lower end resolution. But this graph also looks quite interesting as most of the training time sort of seems to take place within the first day, so you know, if I'm doing a low resolution, I, I may be able to get away with training for just three or four days uh, to get some reasonable results. But I'm not doing any training in this, we're just getting the requirements set up. So here we are, we've got the requirements. And I'm not going to be going through them in the exact order here, but yeah. Okay, so the first thing to do is make sure you've got your NVIDIA GPU drivers installed. These should have been installed automatically if you ticked the Install Third Party Apps tick box at the beginning. Um, you can also check if you go into here and look for Additional Drivers. Then in the Additional Drivers tab in Software Updates, it will show you, there you go, NVIDIA Proprietary Drivers. So those are the ones you want to use. Another thing you can do is pop it in your terminal and you can get much the same information and you can also install the drivers from the Ubuntu drivers command. So Ubuntu drivers devices, that will show me which cards I have in the available drivers. And I can also do Ubuntu drivers auto install, uh, will install automatically. Next thing to do is to install CUDA. So for this, I'm going to make sure I've got my repositories up to date with my super secret password there. So I'm running sudo. First thing to do is install the build essentials. It'll take a couple of seconds. Yes, please. And then the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. Uh, this will also take a couple of seconds. I just have to modify how time works. Okay, so with that installed, you should be able to run NVCC minus minus version, and it will tell us we're running CUDA Compilation Tools release 10.1. Fantastic, excellent. So next thing we need to do is the CUDNN. Now this isn't quite as easy, because uh, you actually have to go over to the NVIDIA developers page. Um, you then also have to log in and all that sort of stuff before you can click on the download. So I'm just gonna log in quickly. There we go, I agree to the terms. And then I'm gonna download the CUDNN or CUDA 10.1, that's the one I've got. I'll have the runtime library. Now, the 20.04 isn't out yet, so I'm gonna have to use the 18.04, and I'm just gonna save that. Download. Okay, it's downloaded. Back to my 
terminal. Downloads. There we go. My package. So install this one with dpackage minus i. Fantastic. And then that's installed. Okay, so next up we need Anaconda. And again, you're over to the Anaconda website and you click on download. And right at the bottom here, we've got the next Python 3.7 installer. So, yes, please, I will also have that one. Okay, and that's, that's download. downloaded. So make sure we've got that there. Yep, Anaconda. So, I need to be able to run that. So, we'll add the executable bit and then we'll run it. Please review the license. Okay. Yeah, this looks like a fantastic license, doesn't it? Should we, should we just skip the license? No. Do I accept the license terms? Yes. Obviously. Do I want to install it in there? Yes. Let's do it in there. So it'll take a couple of seconds again. Excuse me while I modify time. There we go. Okay, so we have now got almost everything we need. So with Anaconda installed, I'll actually open up a new terminal, make it a little bit bigger, and start up the Anaconda Navigator. This gives us a sort of GUI thing where we can add all the bits and pieces we want. Now what we want is a new environment. We'll create one. And uh, Python 3.6, that's what it said on the web page, and we'll just call this Stargen2. Take a couple of seconds to create. And we'll also run an index update. And change this to all. Then we'll add TensorFlow as the first thing. And we want the TensorFlow GPU. Now that says 2.1, which it says no, that does not work. So instead, we will go for 1.15 and apply that and all the dependencies. I'll take a couple of seconds to install and then once that is installed, we can run Pillow as well. Okay, so we'll have the default version of Pillow. And then also the default version of requests. Requests is in there somewhere. There we go. Why? Couple of seconds. Fantastic. So now if we open up our terminal, it should be in the Stargan 2 area. And we'll also install Git. So that will let us download uh, Stargan stuff that we need. Because our very next command is a git clone. So we'll get the Stargan 2 stuff. Great, and we'll just pop in there. Now, on the web page again here, we've got this NVCC test. So if we run this test, it should come back and say, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Fantastic, great. Now we've also got these uh, pre-trained networks here as well. So pre-trained networks are stored as pickle files on the StyleGAN2 Google Drive folder. So let's have a look at these. We've got a bunch of pickle files here in the networks area. So we've got car comfy A and cats and churches and people and all that stuff. So let's do something with the StyleGAN2 cars. So if we go back again and look at the, oops, over here. The different examples so this is how you can generate various different images so we'll do one with the cars for example let's, let's create some random cars and there we go so we're using this stargan 2 car config pickle which is the, the first one up there let's use that pickle this will take a few seconds again let me just modify time slightly And there we go. Now it gives us this funny error because uh, it doesn't seem to be looking in the right place. 
Um, so what I do there is just sort of make that directory that it's looking for um, and then link in the real one. Yeah. So then it doesn't give you that not found error. Anyway, so if you then go and look in your files and in your stargan 2 directory and then in the results, you should see lots and lots of pictures of cars. So there you go, you've got a funny one there with this bonnet open and a couple side by side there. Yeah, so there you go, you can generate random pictures of cars, churches, cats, all, all sorts of things. Hope you've enjoyed this nerdy rodent video and uh, I'll see you on another one.